Matteo leading the six. Plankert, the man with Belgian family ties, was next. Duclos LaSalle, a Frenchman who once finished number two and knows that you are remembered only when you win. Then three more Belgians, Dirk de Wolf, one of the few confident on the pave, Edwin Van Hoydonk, the class of the group, and Jean-Marie Vompers, who had no business being with him. With just over 10 miles to go, the pounding has made the handlebars difficult to grasp. But suddenly, it is De Wolf who decides to go to his strength, confidence on the cobblestones, to grasp the lead. He can only hope to build a lead such that he can withstand a sprint at the finish, for which he is not well suited. In so doing, would he wind up like Yates, Vignon, and long-forgotten Jean-Claude Collotti? Or would these last few pushes of the pedals be master strokes. An overflow crowd in the Roubaix Velodrome is watching the final minutes of the 87th edition of this classic race, which began more than six hours before and 160 miles ago. More and more it appears that the man who appears first in the stadium will be a complete surprise. A surprise like Dirk DeWolf. The chase made up of riders all of different teams has to band together trying to chew through the late afternoon air, working as a newfound team with a mission with a prime objective of being close enough when the cobbles finally end and the sprint on asphalt begins. Suddenly, the other outcast in the group, Jean-Marie Bumpers, pulls away for a solo pursuit of the leader. The two men with the worst credentials at the front were running one-two. For Dirk DeWolf, once told he would never be a great racer, was riding where Sean Kelly, Stephen Roche, or Fignon was supposed to be, and everyone was chasing him. He was sailing over waters he knew, the rough seas provided by the cobblestones that were so frequently his training ground in Belgium. Bompers was waiting perfectly to use the smooth sections of road between the pave, slicing through his favorites of the 14 gears and moving closer still. Now the feeling of a submarine captain. The periscope rises above the water, and there directly in front of you is your prey. This was Bompers spotting DeWolf and pushing even harder, all ahead full. Now they are together, approaching the outskirts of Roubaix. On one hand, DeWolf had been caught, but on the other, and more importantly, he now has help. Ironically, the two men had once been teammates and are now neighbors and training partners. Might they have dreamed of a moment like this? Now between them, they will decide this race. Bumper signals for advice. What do I do? Try to build a lead? Wait for DeWolf to move? Behind, aware suddenly that they have run out of time and distance. Von Hoida, Duco LaSalle, Matteo, Planker. Today, they will race for third. With the last of the cobblestones rolling beneath their wheels, Dirk DeWolf, 28, and Jean-Marie Vompers, 30, both old for bike racing, are alone now with their thoughts and the special chemistry that exists between two men who have left behind both the pack and their teammates and are alone with each other in a strange world neither has ever experienced the lead this late in a major race. Both are Belgians, drawn forward now by the magnet of their homeland, but also strangely repelled by fear of entering the velodrome first and being drafted and passed right before the line. Who would lead? Neither man seemed to want to. Just minutes ago, they exchanged positions willingly in an effort to conserve, be aerodynamic, and maintain their lead. Now, a move to the front has much more meaning. Dirk DeWolf's press to the lead means that when they enter the velodrome for one and a half laps to determine the winner, he wants to be the one they greet first. And so it is to be. Bumpers seems content to let it happen.
At this point, both men know it is simply a matter of who has how much left. They have visited 600,000 people along the way, and after so many miles, it has come down to yards. For a chance to be on a list of champions that includes Eddie Merckx, the Belgian cycling king they idolize, win $25,000, and to say you won one of the most prestigious and traditional races in an upset to be remembered. DeWolf maintains his position, surely expecting bumpers to make a move. But when? Second year in a row, a butler claims the mansion. A domestique, a worker, wins the race. How did it happen? What was the final strategy? Our liaison to the cycling world is British journalist Phil Liggett, who speaks to the champion, Don Marie Bumpers. When you came here to the velodrome, you stayed in second place. Was that a tactic? Yeah, Peter Post uh, told me to to take the second uh, position so that I could uh, see what Dirk de Wolf wanted to do and uh, I attacked and they uh, couldn't uh, pass me. I think we were the two best in front and uh, Dirk de Wolf was very strong but I was a little bit stronger I think. And when did you feel you had the race won? After the finish. <laughs> It is very possible Jean-Marie Bumpers will never win another classic race, but in six hours and 46 minutes, his position on the team, his feel about himself, and the success of his career changed. No matter what happens, Jean-Marie will have a cobblestone trophy which will forever remind him of the day he conquered the Ave when no one thought he could. Edward Van Hoydonk of Belgium won the battle for Thuc. Sean Kelly ended 15th. 111 didn't finish. Greg LeMond among them. It was a day to keep many teams alive, for another time in July, 21 days, known as the Tour de France. 